Vincent's pick tonight is the 1970 movie Patton, starring George C. Scott and Carl Malden. One interesting point to note is that the movie was also co-written by Francis Ford Coppola. The movie won several Academy Awards, including uh, Best Actor for George C. Scott. And if you haven't seen this movie, you should at least sit down and watch it one time. It is a long movie, though. So the real General Patton used to go around and give what they called the blood and gut speeches to the troops to motivate them before they went into uh, combat. This opening sequence at the beginning of the movie, though, uh, General Patton's already a four-star general, so this is really not quite at the beginning of the story. This is really more like the what would be at the end of the story, but they showed it first, and it's a spectacular opening scene. It's certainly the most famous opening sequence of a movie ever, so it's that in itself is entertaining. This opening speech in this movie is actually played for troops even today, so it's very cool. Check it out. Patton will go down in history as one of the great warlords, to be sure. Point out this scene here where he's wearing all his medals. Uh, looks like I see a Medal of Honor, a Bronze Star, a Silver Star, a Purple Heart, and many service medals from his time in World War I, World War II, obviously, and even a little bit before the First World War. Now, George C. Scott certainly looks a lot like the real uh, General Patton. But uh, <laughs> one uh, thing that's really different, though, is uh, Patton wishes he had George C. Scott's voice. George C. Scott had that craggly smoker's voice, and unfortunately, the real Patton sounded a little more like Ross Perot, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I wouldn't even look that up, because you'll be disappointed if you hear his actual speaking voice. So this movie's generally uh, written from the perspective of General Patton's friend Omar Bradley, another general from World War II, and the last living five-star general. But it's a, a very complimentary portrayal of Patton and uh, some some of the bad as well. But uh, yeah, m mostly very very complimentary of the spirit of the man. Anyway. One interesting little nugget we learned about uh, General Patton in this movie is that he literally believed in reincarnation and believed he was all these famous uh, figures from history, Napoleon, Alexander the Great, and so on. So that's a fascinating uh, little thing we learned, especially at the beginning of the movie when uh, Patton is uh, sent to North Africa to fight the Germans and he uh, visits some uh, ancient ruins from Carthage. Patton actually claimed to be in ancient Carthage during the uh, Punic Wars. So I don't know if he believed he was Hannibal or Caesar, <laughs> or both, I don't know. <laughs> now at the beginning we get to see a very cool set piece opening battle scene between General Patton and what would become his, pretty much his nemesis, uh, German General Erwin Rommel, the, the famous Desert Fox. And so Patton outfoxes the fox with this particular battle and is victorious and it's very uh, glorious for Patton and you, know, you start seeing uh, what this man's really all about. Patton is quoted as saying that he uh, won the battle because he read uh, Rommel's book. <laughs> so uh, one of these days I gotta go find this book. I don't know what book he was referring to, but uh, Rommel must have written some kind of battle strategy book. So I, I gotta go look this thing up. So after Africa, Patton is uh, assigned to uh, invade Sicily along with uh, British General Montgomery. And this is where we get to expose uh, just what kind of a man Patton is and what uh, lengths he'll go to in his pursuit of glory and victory. Patton became uh, obsessed with the idea that he just had to beat General Montgomery to the coast to the town of Messina and cut off the German retreat and he just had to be the first one there which is fine I, I, I agree with his drive but uh, the strategy and the tactics he used were quite desperate with a lot of beach landings to get behind the Germans and it cost a lot of lives to pursue this idea that he had to be first. So I, I don't know, it's controversial. During this campaign in Sicily, Patton famously slapped uh, an enlisted man 
for cowardice and I think maybe even slapped a few more guys too and was practically sent home in disgrace and relieved of duty so uh, it was a close call there. However with that said Patton was relieved of command of the 7th Army that was in Sicily and he was relegated to this sort of nonsensical decoy role uh, where uh, we would send him around to different locations around Europe. But see, here's the thing. The Germans actually were afraid of Patton, and so they were keeping an eye on his whereabouts. And it's kind of fascinating. A guy we almost sent home in disgrace was our best general, and the Germans were afraid of him. And they would plan their defenses based on where Patton happened to be visiting. So it was an interesting strategy. I've never really heard of that before in history. So Patton finally gets back in the war and is given command of the Third Army, which he later makes famous, and is part of the D-Day operation and the drive across Europe. And as Patton is quoted in the movie as saying, they needed an old, screwy old horse cavalryman to <laughs> lead the uh, Third Army across Europe, and uh, they got one with Patton. There's another famous uh, true sequence that happens where uh, Patton pushes his uh, forces until they basically ran out of gasoline and outran their supply lines and they stayed right where they were and fought and there's a famous uh, scene that depicts this in the movie you can watch for. Now during the whole Battle of the Bulge sequence depicts the true life prayer that Patton made to God for better weather so that the Army Air Corps could come in and support, you know, our troops. I guess my only complaint about the movie is during this Battle of the Bald sequence, the action seems to kind of drag a little bit here. Um, I know what they were trying to do and what they were trying to show, but uh, yeah, this part really needed to be edited out, really, and shortened a bit. So there's some good action sequences in it, but it's, it's generally just comes to a screeching halt at this point of the movie. I don't know. So as the war is winding down, the American forces and the Russian forces actually link up in Germany. And this brings us to the most famous uh, sequence in the movie that's uh, highly entertaining. <laughs> I don't want to give it away in case you haven't seen this movie, but uh, yeah, you'll, you'll really enjoy this whole sequence uh, where Patton uh, meets this Russian general Kopkov or whatever his name is. Uh, very amusing and <laughs> very memorable. <laughs> So with that said, at this point in history, Patton actually gets relieved of, of command of the Third Army because of comments he made about wanting to go to war with the Russians right then and there and push them back out of Europe. And he said we should do it while we have the army here to do it with. And a lot of people wonder why we didn't do that and what was the story there, how come that didn't happen. So a lot of you may be surprised to know that there actually was a plan to do exactly that. Uh, it wasn't that shocking what Patton said. Uh, Churchill had drawn up a plan called Operation Unthinkable, and they were actually going to possibly uh, attack the Russians and push them back out of Poland and back into Russia. Uh, they didn't do it, and I suspect some of it might have to do with the disposition of the troops that were facing the Allied armies at this point. And if you look on this map, you'll see the green, orange, blue, and white are the Allied armies. And if you look at the Russians here, it looks like we're just terribly outnumbered. But here's the thing, the Russians lied about the uh, disposition of their troops. As it turned out, all these army and core strength troops you see the Russians have here were actually divisions. And they lied on purpose about the sizes of them just to intimidate the Germans. And the intelligence on this was just really never corrected. So. If you actually corrected this map, uh, about two-thirds of the red squares would actually vanish, and this, the numbers of forces would actually look a little more even-steven. So with that said, it turns out we probably should have listened to Patton. I don't know. It's, he's a very controversial figure in history and will certainly go down as one of the great warlords, and I highly recommend this movie. Thank you.